Welcome back to my faction guide series of Legends of Runeterra, and in this video we're going to take a deep look at Ionia. In this video we look at the faction identity of Ionia, the champions, and then we take a deep dive into the mechanics present in the factions, we'll discuss the cards and combos you should look out for, see which factions synergize well with Ionia, and last but not least we'll look at a quick summary of this video. Subscribe if you like what I'm doing and to receive more Legends of Runeterra guides. And now, let's go. And I want to start with the faction identity. Ionia has four overarching teams that appear over and over within the faction. Trickery, as in stunning, recalling, modifying values on the fly to outsmart your opponent. Summoning, su summoning as in getting benefits from summoning units on your side of the board. Control to prevent your enemy's game plan from happening. And then we have hand buff, which does exactly what it says. It's buffing up your units while they are in your hand. As with every faction, champions of Ionia make use of this archetype to a certain extent. Our first champion, Sad, plays already into two of those archetypes. Every time he attacks, he summons an ephemeral living shadow with his exact stats onto the board attacking. By hand buffing Sad, you can essentially double his threat potential, and since he summons a unit, he will also trigger your summoning keywords. If he or his shadows have struck the nexus twice, he will level up, getting the plus one plus one buff, while doing a little change in his wording. Now his shadows also receive Sad's keywords. Shen is your tank support champion, applying barrier to an attacking unit on the right of him. After applying barrier four times, he levels up, and from then on, whenever an ally gets a barrier, they will also receive a plus 3 attack buff from Shen, making attacks a bit more threatening. And he's typically uses to protect key cards in your deck, and most of the time you will see him in Fiora decks, which definitely needs his protection. Yasuo is a champion who can carry a game in a trickery deck that is made to support him. Whenever an enemy unit is stunned or recalled, he will do 2 damage to it, and after level up, he will even strike it. This ability can turn the entire game upside down, because with him on the board, a stun or recoil means death to the enemy most of the time. Karma shines in late game decks that focus on control, so they can overwhelm you in the late game. Until you reach 10 mana, she will create a spell every turn, and more than often these spells can be useful, or you keep them for when you want to trigger her leveled up ability, which she will receive as soon as you become enlightened. Enlightened means that you have reached maximum mana, which typically happens in around 8 to 10, depending on the spells you played before. Let's start with the deep dive into faction, where we'll look at each archetype in detail. As I said before, trickery is all about fooling the enemy and tricking them into less effective moves. Ghost enables an allied unit to bypass the block on an enemy unit, except it also has elusive, which can be useful for leveling up Zed, for example, but also to have a unit survive that would have died from a block. And will also do a bit of nexus damage, so nice. Solitary Monk sounds dangerous at first, but imagine you have a lot of cheap units with a good deployability, like some of the hand buff units have. With Solitary Monk, you get an elusive for free on the board, and you can replay those cheap deployabilities again. Also recalling will count to Yasuo's level up, and all recalled allies will be healed of any damage they took. Which is not bad for a 3 point card. Will of Ionia has multiple uses. Either you use it on your own unit to save it from an overwhelming attacker, which is still blocked even if you recall your blocking unit, try to trigger a deploy twice and so on. Or you use it onto an expensive enemy unit, especially on a unit without the deploy effect. This way you can trade a 4 cost card with for example an 8 cost enemy card, which is a pretty good trade on your side. Stand United can be used while being attacked or while you attack. Either way, it enables you to deploy two barriers, but also switch up your units, so the blocker assignment changes in a way that they will kill an enemy unit even though the enemy plays their blocker so carefully on the board. Yon is a fantastic late game card, stunning two enemies at once and taking them out of the round, enabling you to deliver the finishing blow or buying you more time on the defending side. Playing Yon while you have a leveled up Yasuo on the board can easily mean victory for you as well. 
Now let's look into the summoning category, which relies on cheap units that you can summon multiple within a turn. Navori Blade Scout is one of those units who do not benefit from summoning other units, but is an excellent target to summon, since it is cheap and receives this little bonus plus elusive in the round. Sparing Student buffs another unit when summoned and falls into the same category as Navori Blade Scout. Green Glade Do does not only have the funniest voice line in the game, but is also the first unit that makes use of the summoning keywords. Each unit which was summoned in a turn will get them plus one plus one, and since they are elusive, this often means that the damage will go straight to the Nexus, and cards like Green Glade Do is why summoning is so good in, as a rush archetype. Kinko Wayfinder plays straight into that ability by summoning two one-cost units like Namori Blade Scout or Sparing Student on deploy. However, since it is Allegiance, this will only trigger if the top card of the deck has the same faction as Kinko Wayfinder, so you typically only want to play it in a mono faction decks. Dawn and Dusk is a mid-range card that can be the last bit of power you need to finish your rush by creating two exact ephemeral copies of an ally. Copy a 6-1 green glit duo and suddenly the enemy faces 18 points of damage to the Nexus, which they can prevent by simply blocking, because thanks to the elusive attack. Windfarer Hatchling would be the next step after that when you're still in play. Its ability buffs up all your weak units on the board to give you a chance of finishing before the enemy overwhelms you in the late game. Talking of late game means talking about con the control archetype. Control means denying the enemy's game plan while going through with yours, and typically this means late game strategies because control is efficient and clearing the board as well. Ionia has the best control card in the entire game, and that is Deny, which simply stops a spell or a skill. Since it only costs 3 mana, this often trades very good by denying an enemy 6 power spell, but this is not all. Because most of the time, the enemy relies on that very specific spell or skill to go through, and if that's suddenly not the case, then the knight just destroyed their winning condition. Instant of Ages is a tool to get some spells in hand, so you don't need to play units early on. Shadow Flare is Ionia's cheaper ruination spell, granting all battling followers ephemeral, which means that they'll die at the end of the round effectively clearing the board of major players, so you can buy a bit more time until you reach the 10 mana mark. Ritual of Renewal helps you to heal a Nexus and stay in the game for a bit longer, and this is especially good when you can double play it through the leveled up karma. Mina Swiftfoot is one of those cards that can win you the game single-handedly by recalling three enemies shattering their defense or attack. The damage she causes is exceptionally high, when you're able to hit units with a cost of 7+, plus, essentially throwing the enemy back more than two rounds by just playing one card. The last archetype is hand buff. Inspiring Mentor is probably the most basic hand buff card, just buffing a card in your hand by plus one plus one. Navori Hyreman, on the other hand, is why hand buff can be strong, duplicating itself and summoning, essentially doubling all the buff it received while it was in your hand. Green Clade Elder adds plus one plus one to all allies in hand, therefore being especially useful if you don't play too many spells. Jewel Protector is a better inspiring mentor and Cephyr Sage can then pay off all your hand buff by copying a unit in your hand with all its buffed stats. Now let's look at the cards we need to look out for in this faction. The first is Deny, since it has the biggest trade potential and can win you games if cast on the right moment. Think of denying cards like Ruination, For the Masia, Judgment, but even something such as Mystic Shot when everything depends on the survival of that, especially, uh, of that exact unit. The higher the spell, the easier the deny, the more you throw the enemy back. So, yeah, the deny is cool. Then we have Yasu and Fey Blade Twirler. I've seen decks built entirely around those cards, but a Blade Twirler goes up to 15 strength on its own. Utilizing its quick attack, it won't even take damage from killing off the enemy blockers, while units too strong for it, you just stun with other cards. Yasu will finish them off for you. Deathmark is a pretty strong card, as it lets one ephemeral unit of yours live, while killing off an enemy unit. Combine this with Sad Living Shadows, but even better with Dawn and Dusk, you receive a pretty good power spike. I also should talk about Mina Swiftfoot again, since she easily trades for 15 points or more. Dropping her in the endgame will make the way free for your attack, 
by throwing the enemy back two or three runs. Yon is similar in that he makes the way free for your attack, but lacks the recalling strength of Mina. Still, those two cards are very good. Factions that work well with Ionia are Noxus and Freljord. Noxus because it supports Ionia with recalls, stuns and some rush cards, while Freljord supports the control archetype reaching 10 quickly while providing good late game units. However, since Ionia is a faction with a very good toolset, it can be splashed into a lot of different decks like Piltua Spellslinger for example as well. So let's summarize. Ionia has four distinct archetypes, Trickery, Summoning, Control and Hand Buff. Good faction synergizers are Nox and Freljord, but Iona is not, a very limited, is not very limited with its faction synergy. Words that come into my mind when talking about Ioni are hand buff, recall, control, stun and elusive. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you want to support my channel and like to see more Legends of Frontier guides. This video is part of a guide series where I go through each faction in detail, so don't forget to check out the other faction guides. Uh, thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to see you again.